Awesome. We are live. Okay. Let me go to my page, make sure it's public so it can be shared out. Yep, every time I'm gonna try to do that because it's always some for some reason it's not set up to live public. Okay. There we go. Hello, everybody that's coming in. I want to thank you for joining us on today. We're going to have an amazing uh, conversation. I have a special guest with me, and she's not a stranger. She has been on with us before. So mm -hmm. I'm just excited, 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 excited for our conversation on today. Uh, Dr. Apostle Jasmine Blair, thank you so much for joining us and coming on and having the Let's Talk Kingdom Women conversation. Amen, amen. Thank you for having me on. It's definitely good to be back on. First of all, I always enjoy these conversations. If definitely pleasurable. It's a good fellowship. And the way that God moves and brings insight is definitely a welcoming and enjoyable experience. Um, but it is an honor to be here for this topic because, you know, there's a lot going on in the body. There's a lot of buzz around, you know, kingdom and women, especially these days with a lot that's going on in society. So I think this is a good conversation to bring to the table, to have so that God's kingdom women can listen in and gain some insight and strategy on how God would like them to be positioned for this season. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so we got some visitors here with us on Facebook. I want to thank uh, Destiny for coming on and Lisa. Thank you both. So we're going to go ahead and just get the conversation started. Amen. So Kingdom Amen. Women. Yes, ma'am. Kingdom Women. Uh, Dr. Apostle Jasmine Blair, what is a Kingdom Woman? Whew. Well, you know, that's, that's <laughs> a loaded topic and we're, we're, I want to talk about this a little bit before I get into, you know, the answer, because when we look yes, around society, we look around Virginia, when we look around Florida, there are many different representations of what a kingdom woman is today. There's a lot out there. And though we're in the body of Christ and we recognize that God is creative and God has different expressions, it creates mm -hmm a bit of a conundrum to try to identify what a kingdom woman is, because depending upon who you ask, depending upon which mm -hmm. denomination you ask, you're going to get a different answer and a different representation. You know, there are, uh, there's a particular big name prophetess, I won't mention their name, but they have a certain platform that is, you know, centered around prayer and centered around, you know, a lot of you know, praying and tearing at the altar. So some would point to that person because of their influence and say, well, that is a kingdom woman. Then there's another particular woman of God whose name I won't mention, very large platform. This woman focuses more on teaching and doctrine and education. This person has many books and many schools. And some will point to that individual and say, well, that is a kingdom woman because of the teaching and the preaching and the doctrine. And then we have others who uh, have influence and because they're connected to this person that pioneered in deliverance and this person that pioneered in healing and this person that pioneered in faith will say, well, that is a kingdom woman because she's connected to person A, B, C, and D who pioneered certain kingdom things. So mm -hmm. the truth of the matter is there are certain aspects of each of these women that I've just given examples of that are good However, if we really dissect the issue and hold it to the Bible, we can't point to each of them and say, okay, well, this is a kingdom woman because they do this. Hmm. 
And that is where we have some of the discrimination and the partiality in the Bible, in the body of Christ, which by the way, the Bible does refer to as the sin of partiality. We favor people because they do things that we like. We favor mm -hmm. people because they say things that remind us of the way we were brought up. We favor people because we aspire to be like them. And then we lift them on a pedestal and look down on everybody else and say, that's not a kingdom woman because I follow this person. Uh, I think this person's ministry is anointing. They do A, B, C, or D. And we make the mistake of taking a particular influential woman of God and putting them on a pedestal and saying, anybody that doesn't do it the way that they do it can't be a kingdom woman. And so now we've got this, this, this new wave of kingdom women that I'm beginning to see, where it's not even really so much about the administration of the gifts or the administration of the anointing. Now it has a look. Now a kingdom mm -hmm. woman is a, a certain type of sew-in. Now a kingdom woman is a certain type of shoe. A kingdom woman is a mm -hmm. certain type of bag, a certain, you know exactly what I'm talking about, a certain type of dress, oh, yes. a certain type of belt, <laughs> a certain type of brooch. And, and when you have this on, people assume, you know exactly what I'm talking about, that yes. you're a kingdom woman because you have that look. And so now we're seeing many of the emerging and recently emerging prophets and apostles in the body of Christ. These women are now dressing in these certain clothing items to try to familiarize themselves and connect themselves with the more influential women that have this look because we've now associated the culture of the kingdom with a certain look and dress. Now, don't get me wrong. I love clothes. I love shoes. I like the dress. You know, I, I definitely enjoy those things, but let's be honest, that is personal preference. There's nothing biblically that says if you don't have a certain bag or a certain belt, that that doesn't make you a kingdom woman. And before we get to what a kingdom woman is, this is the type of foolishness, unfortunately, we have to address because mm -hmm. it's causing dissension in the body of Christ. And it's causing people to elevate people who cannot pray themselves out of a wet paper bag because they have a certain belt or brooch. Why? <laughs> These are things that we have to address in yes. the body of Christ. And while it's great to, you know, we believe in fathers and sons, we believe in mentors, we believe in legacy when it comes to the faith, but we cannot just automatically say somebody is a kingdom woman because her spiritual mother is so-and-so or her spiritual father is so-and-so. That person may be a pioneer and a father to many or a pioneer and a mother to many, but just them being associated with that name does not automatically qualify them to be a kingdom woman. So the problem that we have Dr. Tamara, is we are stopped, we are no longer testing certain people by the spirit because of the name that they're connected to and our faith, in addition to the bag or the brooch that they have. <laughs> so, oh, well, this person is under this person. Does the, so do we not test them by the spirit the way we would everybody else? because of who they are connected to, that is something that we have to stop doing. It is it's, yes. it's meant well, but it's, it's a sin of partiality. Everybody needs to be tested by the spirit first and foremost, whether we're talking about kingdom women, we're talking about kingdom men, apostles, prophets, leaderships, deacon, anybody who is claiming and functioning as anything in the body of Christ to further the will and agenda of the kingdom of God must be tried and tested by the spirit of God to ensure that their fruit is inspected and it lines yes, up. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So now that we've dialogued a little bit about what the kingdom woman is not, let's talk a little bit about <laughs> what a kingdom woman is. Uh, Dr. Tamara, first, I want to take a minute to discuss the kingdom itself. Yes. Because we find that this is a buzzword. And again, depending mm -hmm. upon who you ask, you will get a different definition on what the kingdom actually is. Yes. And many people that are claiming the kingdom who are doing ministry in the name of the kingdom, they have limited understanding on what the kingdom is. In the kingdom is the spiritual realm over which God reigns as king and it is carried out on the earth. So the kingdom is really the domain in which God exercises his kingship. Mm -hmm. All right. It is the domain of a ruler. So 
the kingdom is it's invisible it is spiritual but nonetheless we feel it we see it we see it moving we see the activity in the signs and the evidence that it is upon us so now we first have to look at these individuals who are saying oh i'm a kingdom woman do you understand the spiritual realm of the kingdom and i'll get further into this in one of the later questions do you really understand what the kingdom is? Can you articulate to me in a few words what the kingdom is? Show me an example of the kingdom operating. Mm -hmm. We first have to be kingdom. So when we look at what a woman is, now woman is the combination of the words womb and man. And that's how we get a woman, a womb man. It is the female counterpart of the human creation known as Adam, because the Bible says he made them male and female and he called them Adam. So Adam represents our human race as people. So even though she was Eve, the Bible says that God called them both Adam. So what is a kingdom woman? It is the female counterpart of the human creation known as Adam that contains the knowledge, the insight and the demonstration and proof that they are citizens of the spiritual realm over which God reigns as king, known as the kingdom of God. That is what a kingdom woman is. Yeah. So when we take this definition and we look at many of the things that we just discussed, it doesn't have anything to do with certain dresses, brooches, bags, or purses, or necessarily whose name. And again, it's no dishonor to spiritual legacy and lineage. We believe wholeheartedly in that. But you can be a part of a lineage and not line up to the family name. Hello. Yes, All the time we hear stories in the news. Some people come from a wealthy family, a well-known name, noble and prominent, and they end up in jail. They end up making a mess of their lives or what have you. Being attached to a name in a lineage does not guarantee your safety and it does not guarantee your entrance into the kingdom of God. So when we take this and we apply this to the kingdom woman, we see that there's a lot more to it. Some of the attributes of a kingdom woman, knowledge of the kingdom of God, which is what we just talked about. If you're going to be a kingdom woman, you have to have some type of knowledge of the kingdom of God. You can't just say, oh, I'm yes. a kingdom woman or I'm preaching a kingdom. Do you have any knowledge of it? Can you teach somebody mm -hmm. else about it? Are you able to yeah. preach and articulate on the kingdom? Because some of us come in power and demonstration, but we don't always have the understanding to be able to articulate the kingdom. And with articulation, we have to be able to demonstrate the power of the kingdom as well. We have to make sure we're going through the process or have gone through the process to be born again in the spirit, because that is how you enter into the kingdom. So for you to profess the kingdom, be a part of the kingdom, to preach and demonstrate the kingdom, you have to make sure you have first entered the kingdom yourself. And we find that many people, because of the Bible, they can give us scriptures about the kingdom, but we find in some of these unfortunate scandals that hit the light that many of them preach about it, but they have not gone through the process to actually enter the kingdom themselves. And another attribute is an advocate for the dominion and the expansion of the kingdom of God, because that is the goal. If you are a kingdom woman, but your goal is expand your influence, if it's to expand your clothing line, which is nothing wrong with growing an entrepreneurship, but the goal should be just to have believers as your customers. The goal should, as a kingdom woman, should be to expand God's purposes and will and agenda first. And then out of that, you allow the Lord to grow you and increase you in any other endeavors that he's giving. Yes, yes, ma'am. I like that. Oh my goodness. He shared so many Good nuggets. I hope you guys that are listening and watching, I hope you guys are taking some notes. <laughs> this is so good. Oh my goodness. Okay. So next question. We always hear the word Christian woman thrown mm -hmm. around. Okay. Does Christian and kingdom women have the same meaning? Okay. That's a very, very good question. And again, I think that's one of those questions you'll get a different answer depending upon who you ask. But I will answer it this way. Every kingdom woman is a Christian woman, but every Christian woman is not necessarily a kingdom woman. Come on, I like Let that. me say that again for the yes. audience. Every kingdom <laughs> woman is a Christian woman, but every Christian woman is not a kingdom woman. 
Why? Yes. Because it depends on the centering of the focus. Now, being a Christian woman is not bad. That's a good thing, all right? But that doesn't mean that you're a kingdom woman. A Christian woman, the, the, the Christian centers around ideas, ideologies, and beliefs concerning Christ and his role as a savior. So if you're a Christian woman, your beliefs are Christ-centered and Christ-focused. And these are things that I consider to be elementary principles of the faith. Examples, how Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross and he died for our sins. He makes intercession on our behalf. Um, he sacrificed himself so that we could have life everlasting. He makes a way out of no way for us. These are elementary principles of our faith. We see Christ in his role as a savior. Most of what we believe, most of what we hear, most of what we preach, most of what we teach as a Christian woman is centered around Christ and his role as a savior. And that is good. We all need that. I would question anybody who never at one point can teach or have any ideas centered around the foundations of our faith and Christ being a savior. Here is where things become interesting, though. That is not the only role that Jesus Christ has. Mm -hmm. That's one of the most important roles, yes, but it's not the only role. And as I say many times, Dr. Tamara, we will only receive the revelation of Jesus Christ according to what we have prepared our hearts and our minds to open to. Yes. So many people see Jesus as a savior and they can't see him to anything else because they have not expanded their mind beyond that. They have not prepared themselves to receive Jesus as anything else other than a savior or the baby in the manger or a little lamb. That's why we always call him sweet baby Jesus. Like Jesus has not been a baby in I don't know how long. And you know, we, we put Jesus on a cross at the end of every message. And I believe we should have the reverence and the humility for what Jesus did on the cross, but he's no longer there. In the Bible, he wasn't no longer there. We read in the Bible where he ascended, but yet we always want to put him back on the cross. Like he's still there. Like he's not seated in heavenly places alongside the father. So our ability to accept ideas and beliefs and the doctrine concerning the fullness of the personhood of Jesus Christ is limited to our understanding, whether or not we're really to open our minds and to see Jesus as more than a savior. Now, when it comes to the kingdom woman, there is a kingdom-centered approach around the ideas and beliefs concerning Christ and his role as a king. A savior and a king are two very different people. Uh, with a savior, this is somebody who's rushing out in your time of need where your life is all in a mess to come save you and they, they're going through. Think about if you're in a burning building, the way somebody will come in and have to save you and what they will sacrifice to go and get you out of a burning building versus when a king is coming to present themselves before you with a royal court. And, and there's an announcement and things like that. There's a whole mo motorcade. There's a whole processional giving honor to this king. A savior and a king are going to present themselves differently. And if we are in the mode of a Christian woman and have not progressed our understanding and our revelation and our relationship with God to that, that is one that is kingdom, then we miss the ability to accept Jesus Christ as the king of kings. Thus, we miss the ability to accept the rest of what comes along with his role as a king. When we receive Jesus as a king, we understand there are ways, principles, and protocol to the kingdom. When we think in the natural briefly, if you go over to Europe, you're not going to come before the queen any old kind of way. You have to dress a certain way, you have to curtsy a certain way. You can't wear certain things. You can't say certain things and you just can't run up. Hey girl, like we best friends either. No, you, you can't do that. She may welcome you, but until you are summoned, you don't position yourself like that. So with a savior, oh my God, oh, thank you, Jesus. We, we think of laying in his arms while he's coming to rescue us. But with a king, there's a different reverence that goes before. There's a different way that you approach him. And when we have women who are Christian women, but not yet kingdom women, there's still a growing and progressing in this understanding. And until we get there, we will even find sometimes that people are offended 
by what looks kingdom and how kingdom is presented. Well, it don't yes. take all that. Jesus love all of us. We all special to God, but you are not going to approach a natural king any kind of way. You're not even going to approach the judge any kind of way. So how much more reference should we give to the king of kings and the Lord of lords than we should in honor somewhere in a natural court system? Yes. We, we grow as we mature from child, from a, a babe in Christ to children to sons of God, as we grow from milk to meat, as we grow from needing a savior to a place where we're empowered to go out and help get other people and add them into the revelation, we're able to preach and teach and bring people in. You grow to a different place where you need Jesus to present himself before you more as a king than you do as a savior. If he's always got to present himself to you as a savior, then that means you're always in a place where you're in trouble. You're always in a place mm -hmm. where you're needy, needy, needy. But at some mm -hmm. point when you grow and mature and you put away childish things, now he can begin to instruct you. Now he can begin to give you decrees. Now he can begin to send you out with marching orders on behalf of the kingdom. You go from needing to be rescued to needing to be instructed and deployed. It's two different things. So every kingdom woman is a Christian woman, but every Christian woman is not yet a kingdom woman because the Christian yeah. woman, until she has matured and progressed in her process to receive Jesus as the King of Kings and a Lord of Lords and the aspects that come along with his kingship and the protocols of his kingdom and to manifest the demonstration of his kingdom, she's yet in a place where she needs to be saved and she needs more of a savior than a king. Yes, yes, ma'am. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what you sharing that it brought me back to a conversation that I had, I think it was last month. Uh, mm -hmm. We had less talk on um, church clothes. Yes. Okay. And it just reminded me of the way that some of us dress as women. Yes. Okay. And I like the comparison because Christian women, because they haven't gotten to that place yet, they feel that they can still come in and dress any old kind of way, mm -hmm. okay? Kingdom, when we know we're going before the king, so we got to come in a certain way. We can't come in there with no uh, night clothes on. We come in from Hello. the club or something. We can't dress like that, okay? No we represent, we, we, we ain't do no bonnets. We, Take the we bonnets off. Stuff. That's not royal. No. <laughs> And it's like, you have to, you, there, there's a difference between Christian and kingdom and it goes, it lines up with how you present yourself as well. Mm -hmm. When you know who you are and who you serve, you're going to come not only before him, but you're going to go before others yes. in a, a, a certain way. So yeah, I just had to share that because I just run like, oh Lord, I like how that, how, uh, 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 Apostle Jasmine made that connection. I'm like, it, it, it really tied it, ties it in. <laughs> if I can get it out. Yes. This ties it all in. It's like, okay, so you're either a Christian woman or a kingdom woman. I want to be, I strive to be a kingdom woman. Amen. Okay. Because I know I've grown, I've become better. So that, that, my, me, I won't place it on nobody else, but that, that's my, uh, that's what I strive to be. Amen. So, Amen. Thank you for sharing that. Just bless my whole little life. Got me all tongue tied and everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this next one, this is one I was like, yes, I love this here. So who are some women in the Bible that represent and teach or show us what a kingdom woman is? Woo! Dr. Yes. Tamara, that is a loaded, loaded <laughs> question. Um. You know, women in the Bible is such a touchy subject because depending upon who you ask, which denomination, what they believe, they're going to paint women in, in so many different ways. You know, they got a whole Bible study on the bad girls of the Bible and they got a whole, you know, they got all kinds of stuff out there. <laughs> They do. So when you ask this question, I'm like, okay, kingdom women of the Bible. I don't think I've really heard or seen this anywhere. Anybody really asked this question like this? So I, I pulled out some names that may not be familiar to many, um, but I, okay. I think this is good. And, you know, just, just a spoiler alert, 
Deborah is not on the list. Deborah is not on our list today. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she, you know, people love to point her out for, for many different reasons. But uh, mm-hmm. you know, here's what's interesting. As as great as a role model as she is, you know, we have to read what scripture says. Oh, she was a judge, she was a judge. And if you read the Bible, and you know, like I tell people, I didn't grow up in church, so. I I read the Bible for exactly what it says. And I got about three or four translations because, you know, you you get more of a broader perspective. But when I read Mm -hmm. the Bible for what it says, nowhere does it ever say God appointed Deborah as a judge. So why do we, it says the people went to her to judge. Every Mm -hmm. other judge, it says, and God appointed so-and-so as a judge. And the Lord raised up so-and-so to be a judge. I'm paraphrasing. And the Lord sent so-and-so to be a judge to the people. But that's the only judge where it says the people went to her to be a judge. So I'm like, well, why do we keep using her as as this grand example? Again, don't mean she won't anoint it. Don't mean the Lord didn't use her in that place. But if we want to be honest and technical, he didn't appoint her. The people went to her for judgment. Come on. Yes. <laughs> the people went to her for judgment. So she, she's not on our list today, maybe in a, a different segment on, on, on women, but not on this one. So <laughs> the first one on the list is Priscilla. And if you've never heard of Priscilla, depending upon the translation that you have, um, you can jot down Romans 16 and three for reference. I won't read all of these, but for those of you that need the scripture, the book, chapter, verse, I've, I've got a few scriptures written now. So you can go back and do some homework and some studying on your own time. Now, who was Priscilla? Priscilla was the wife to Aquila. They were both tent makers and alongside Paul, and they were noted for tutoring Apollos and and getting him right and fixing some things in his doctrine. Mm -hmm. Now she's very important because it's nowhere else really in the Bible. Do you read of any type of husband and wife team like this? This is something that's very unique in his kingdom. And I believe this is a model that God is actually restoring to apostolic ministry, even in this day and age, is couples in ministry, husband and wife teams teaching and preaching alongside each other. You don't really see that. And they were tent makers alongside Paul. And if we do a little bit of homework, you know, Paul mentioned a tent makers, they were making prayer shawls or talits, however you call them. And this was what Paul did when he went certain places and either the people did not have the money to take care of his needs or they were stingy because the false apostles came through. He turned to his tent making as a means to make income. Mm -hmm. So Priscilla is an example of a kingdom woman because not only is she traveling in the apostolic team along with Paul, along with her husband Aquila, they are ministering together and they're also in business together. This is very, very kingdom. They're they're bringing the gospel. There's a Christ-centered focus, but then there's also a kingdom focus because they are expanding the work of the ministry during that time, but they are also in an economic place where they are bringing finances in to help support that ministry as well. So she is the first person I would list as an example of a kingdom woman. Yes. Now, what would you say to to that, Dr. Tamara? I agree. I I actually love this story. I've read it many times and I like the dynamics. I love the husband and wife um, dynamics. You know, Mm -hmm. we need more of uh, those type marriages in the world today. Yes, we do. Amen. And, And I would agree to that. You know, you see a lot of couples competing in ministry today. Mm -hmm. You know, you got one doing this or one doing that, or, you know, people, they try to pull on the anointing of one and elevate one and put the other one down. And when we really understand marriage as the mystery that is supposed to be in the reflection of Jesus Christ's relationship with the church, there shouldn't be any type of division or promoting of one and the demoting mm-hmm. of the other. They're supposed yeah. to be moving in unity. It doesn't necessarily yeah. mean they don't necessarily have the same call 
or the same office, but it should not be abnormal to see husband and wife teams, you know, functioning in ministry. Mm -hmm. You know, as you know, my husband and I, Apostle Lionel, we flow in ministry together and we go many places and people are shocked and they say, well, I've never seen anything like this. And honestly, with all these married folks in the kingdom, I'm confused. Why are we not seeing this? We see all these married couples. One got a church over here. One got a church over there. We no, no, we can't say that that's God's order. Come on now. We can't say that that's God's order. You pass, uh, Unless it's different branches of the same church and you just filling in until the new pastor get trained. Y'all shouldn't be pastor of the same church. Y'all shouldn't be pastor in different churches. That don't make sense. If you're not helping and assisting for a little minute, you, y'all shouldn't be pastor in different churches. That's out of order. Yeah. that is that is out of order where's yeah. the unity in that where are you building and growing and functioning together so the next person that i want to talk about is junia and scripture references oh, romans yeah. 16 and 7 um some translations say junius now she's believed to be a relative of adronicus some historians say that that was Her husband, some say that that may have been her brother. All we can really confirm is that they were related in some way. Now, Junia is considered to be a female apostle. Now, many will say, oh, she Mm -hmm. wasn't, no, that's not true. It was a mistranslation. (laughs) But from the studies that they've done, they have not found any record of a man named Junius. And it's believed that they wrote the name that way because of how society was at the time and because women were considered to be second-class citizens. In their right mind, they weren't about to just make it clear that a woman was an apostle. Mm -hmm. So they wrote it in the letter that way so it could be received. But she was sitting among the apostles in that scripture. You'll read about her in Adronicus and her being seated among the apostles and with the apostles. She is believed to be a female apostle. So she is an example of a kingdom woman because not only was she moving in ministry, but she was moving in ministry at the highest level, which there were not many women moving in today. And Mm -hmm. now as the church is growing and progressing in their understanding and revelation, you see more influential names and more big names coming forward now saying, yes, Junior was in fact a female apostle. Yes. So while we don't read about many in the Bible, we do have Junia. And, you know, some would even argue that Priscilla and Aquila were apostles alongside Paul. That is to be debated. But mm-hmm. D- Junia definitely was named amongst the apostles. You can't be named amongst people you are not peers to. Come you on. know, nothing else. We don't see that in the Bible. Mm-hmm. So she's definitely an example of a kingdom woman. And I believe even in this season that God is restoring more women to the true women, to the apostolic, to have the example in place that we've had before. You know, we still have people swearing up and down to this day that women can't preach and all this other stuff. God bless them. But we see clear as day that God was specific to ensure that Junior was named in the scripture so that this revelation could, in fact, be found. Yes, ma'am. Yes. And I actually, I... um heard two other people um, speak on Junia and make the same claim that she's a female apostle. Mm -hmm. I actually just got a book um, that's geared specifically towards her. So I'm excited about reading that. Um, Mm -hmm. But yes, definitely. Um, But I do want to say something about what you said about some people not thinking that women uh, yes. should be preaching. It's like, some of us preach better than y'all dudes out there. Just want to put it out there. Well, <laughs> let y'all know <laughs> if we ain't supposed to be doing it, we doing it well. <laughs> it, 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 hello, hello. Come on now. So, some of y'all need to step aside. I'm gonna let y'all know. Step it's aside. all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Amen. Pastor Jazz, I'm gonna let you continue. Amen. Now, the next woman that I want to talk about is Mary Magdalene. Mm. Now, there's a lot of controversy surrounding her for many different things you know people talk about her past and the type of life she may have lived you know she's one of those that got considered one of the bad girls of the bible but we're not here to take that uh that direction today i'm here to point out something very important scripture reference is john 20 verses 17 and 18 
And we see, and I'm paraphrasing that in Jesus' resurrection, and oh my goodness, he's not in the tomb. And so they're all looking for him. So she's sitting there boohooing and crying. And somebody's behind her saying, Woman, why are you crying? And she turned, she thought it was one of the gardeners, one of the caretakers in the air. And she turned around and this was Jesus. And Jesus commands her to go back to his brother and to go back to his disciples and proclaim that he has, his, he is risen. So now look at this. All right. They're at the tomb. They're looking for Jesus. Now you got men there. If you read it, there are men there looking for Jesus with her. But mm-hmm. yet Jesus waits till they leave and he appears himself in his resurrection to a woman first, mm-hmm. not the disciples that was with him Come all on. that time. Come on. He waited to the men that walked with him. Uh Oh, oh my God. Left the area <laughs> looking for him. And then he reveals himself to Mary Magdalene. He said, now you go back and proclaim that I'm risen to my disciples. You go back to my brothers and proclaim that I have risen. Mm-hmm. Out of all of the people that he could have appeared to, he appeared to a woman first and he sent her out to proclaim, preach means to proclaim yes. that he is risen. He yes. gave her an apostolic mandate, though it doesn't specifically call her an apostle. Jesus Christ himself appeared to her because I believe every apostle, if, you, if you're an apostle, at some point you have to have a revelation from God. You need to see God. If you haven't seen the Lord in some type of way, I question your apostleship. But anyway, Mm -hmm. he appeared to her first in his resurrection, showed himself to her, and he gave her the mandate to go back and tell everybody and proclaim that he was risen. So she's definitely an example of a kingdom woman because she was pioneering something that even the men of that time did literally, as we can see in scripture, did not have revelation of. But he entrusted her with it to go on and carry it out and proclaim it to his disciples yes 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 i love this example because this is what i got if you want something done right give the woman the assignment Mm -hmm. okay we gonna get the job done yes okay some of the guys if he if he would have gave it to the the men that were there they would have probably not told it right they would have probably skipped some of the steps we gonna do it on point and do it accurate and get it done so just you know, going back mm-hmm. to what I said previously, we, we, you know, we out here. Some of these, yes. some of the women that's out here, we will preach your socks off. Some of these dudes, it's like they doing out here doing other things. We don't get get into that, but we gonna come and get the assignment done. We gonna be focused, okay? That's we right. gonna be on point. We ain't thinking about what we gonna be doing later. No, we gonna be thinking about what we doing right now because we uh, God has given us a mandate to follow. We gonna get the job done. So yes, yes, I love that uh, you brought up Mary Magdalene. Yes. yes, indeed. Now, the next person that I want to bring up is Lydia of Philippi. Now, um, to refresh some of y'all's memories, when Jesus Christ was asking them, well, who do men say that, that I am? They was in Caesarea Philippi. And, you know, he was saying upon this rock, you know, I'll build my church and all of that. So Lydia was from Philippi. Scripture references Acts 16, 11 through 15, and also in verse 40. Now, she was believed to be a widow who gave to the poor. She did a lot of charity work. And when Paul and Silas came to Philippi and their work was stifled, she opened her home and invited Paul and Silas in her home. And so through that, they were able to grow the local church in Philippi in her household. Mm-hmm. So not only was she converted to believe in Jesus Christ and she received the word of the gospel, she was a catalyst to them growing the church of Philippi because she opened her home and she gave financial support as well. So yeah. Lydia of Philippi is considered to be a kingdom woman because she was a conduit for the birth of the church in that city. They were, their doors was closed. The guards was after them. They they could not get the work off the ground. Had she not opened their home, there may have never been a church in Philippi during that time. So not only did she receive of the faith, she put her finances to, and she used her home as a catalyst for them to birth the church. Yes, It makes her a kingdom woman because she put her finances and her resources 
forward for the advancement of God's kingdom will and agenda. And this also sheds light on an ancient role that many do not discuss. You know, these same people that say, oh, women shouldn't preach. And, you know, there were no women preachers. There were no women in leadership in the Bible. But you actually, if you pay attention, there's quite a few women in the Bible. They could not support in, in teaching roles or leadership roles because of how society was structured at that time. But yeah. you know how they support it? With their dollars, with mm -hmm. their oils, with their mm -hmm. food, with their linens, with their homes. That's a whole nother teaching for a whole yes. nother day. But yes. you will see even throughout church history, if you study enough, even when they begin to go out to the deserts, there's a whole teaching on the forgotten uh, desert mothers during the time where Rome and Constantine was prominent and they could not preach and teach in Rome. They went out to the deserts and began to teach the ways of Jesus Christ. They began to build whole monasteries for Christians. They had clothes, they had foods. Many of them sold all their money, all their possessions and they took their wealth and they set up refuge to carry on the teachings of Jesus Christ. So mm -hmm. many kingdom women in biblical times, because they couldn't go to school and be a rabbi, because they couldn't get a trade, they couldn't work in the family business, they made little things and they sold little things and they took what they had and they gave. This gives us a whole different understanding of that alabaster box. Mm -hmm. She financially supported and, and really, if you want to be technical, she put, supplied the building so they could have the church. <laughs> <laughs> if it weren't for her, they wouldn't have had no building and had a church. Come on. <laughs> so the men were preaching it, but she had to build it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yes, 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 yes. Did you have anything else uh, to add on yes, that one? Yes, okay. I've, I've got two more, actually. Okay. Um, the next one is Phoebe. Um, I believe it's pronounced Century. And Phoebe was a deaconess. Scripture reference is Romans 16, 1 and 2. And Phoebe was entrusted by Paul to go around and deliver his letters to different places in mm -hmm. Rome. So she would collect the letters from Paul, however she got them. And we know Paul was in jail at some point. He had a lot going on. However, she got them letters. Like you said, they, the, she got it done. Mm -hmm. All right. She, Phoebe got them letters and she went around undetected and she made sure they got the letters and she delivered the letters back to Paul. So this is one of the few places, you know, we, we had women deaconesses. They were there before Constantine and they came along and tried to structure and institutionalize Christianity and add all these extra things to our faith. Women were prominent. They wouldn't have got those letters from Paul if it was not for Phoebe. Mm -hmm. She's an example of a kingdom woman because she had an assignment. She worked alongside the apostle Paul, which is one of the most prominent apostles of that time and she ensured those messages were delivered and she delivered them back even in his bondage she continued to assist him on the outside to carry out the work now the next person that i want to talk about is tabitha of joppa scripture references acts 9 verses 36 through 42 she was a widow she was also one who did a lot of charity work she gave to the poor lots of acts of kindness and Peter went down there and ended up raising her from the dead. She was an older widow. She got sick and she died. But because of the work that they did, and they heard that Paul was not, excuse me, Peter was not too far from Joppa. They went up and said, hey, Peter, Tabitha died. Can you come help her? And he came and he spoke to her and rose her up and she rose up. She was able to continue her work, but it was because of her charity that they said they went and go track down Peter so that they could raise her from the dead and she could continue the work that she was doing. She was a biblical widow because she was not nobody's grandma. She dedicated herself to prayer and ministry and the charity of the work of Christ, taking care of the homeless, taking care of the needy yes. to ensure that they had what they needed. And so that is all I have for that for the kingdom women of the bible thank you so much that was all all of these women that you shared were good and uh excellent examples on what it is to be a kingdom woman i want to go back to lydia because mm -hmm. lydia she represents many of the women that are frequent frequent frequenting 
mm-hmm. churches today yes. because we still finance the church. We still give resources into the church. So a lot of us are uh, doing the works of Lydia. Yes. Okay. There are not too many men that I know of that um, go out of their way to provide finances and resources to uh, fund the kingdom of God. That's okay. True. So I wanted to share that. Um, and I want to ask this question mm-hmm. just for everybody that's on, um, because you made a lot of good points with all of the women on here. Um, but the question I have, and just want to give everybody just more to think on, um, are you on assignment? Okay. But just because everybody, oh yeah, I'm on assignment, but more importantly, mm-hmm. okay. Are you on assignment for God? Are you on assignment for the kingdom of God? You know, we don't want um, to get the, um, don't want to get get it uh, confused or say just because you're on assignment, you believe or you think that you're a kingdom woman, but are you on assignment for the kingdom of God? Yeah. Okay. Because if you are, if you are, if you claim to be a kingdom woman, we should be out here serving the kingdom of God. There's something that we should be doing within this earth. Okay, that's helping others, not only ourselves, but helping other women, helping other uh, men, helping children. Are you on assignment for the kingdom of God? So that's just something for all of us to think about, especially if you're out here claiming to be something. Uh, There are um, things that you should be doing. You should look a certain way. You should be representing the God that you claim to serve. So I just want to give some everybody just something to think on. Yeah. Um, as we go into our next um, question. Before I do that, is there anyone that is watching us right now that has any questions uh, before we go into our last um, discussion piece here? Just checking the chat to yeah, see if we have any questions a out there. Type in. Mm-hmm. You know, but while we're waiting on the questions, I definitely want to follow back to what you were saying about women and financing and ministry. Um, in this day and age, I've never heard so many women say I'm called to be a kingdom financer. I'm called to help fund and finance the kingdom. I don't hear too many men raising their hand hollering about they financing nothing for the kingdom. And it's not saying that they're not out there, but we see that this is literally a burden that these women carry, a a burden, a responsibility, almost like you carry a burden in prayer. They have a burden to assist and finance Mm -hmm. the kingdom. And so we do have a lot of women that are functioning in that way and providing resources to the kingdom. And I believe it's not by accident that God is positioning women to do these things because, you know, we as nurturers, we have a certain posture and a certain heart to give. And we see all through scripture where women funded Jesus's ministry. They, they yes. gave of their substance and resources. They ministered to him out of their substance. That is resources. So as God is positioning us today, do not find it strange, women of God that are watching. If you begin to feel a burden or you have felt this burden off and on to do for the church, to do for the ministry, to do certain things, ask God to put something in your hands, whether it's resources, whether it's an idea, a business, whatever it, it is. Ask God to put something in your hands, if that is you, so that you can be a blessing through your resources and your substance to continue to further the kingdom will and agenda. Yes. Yes. And I even want to throw it out there that us giving our time, because a lot of us may not have those finances, but you just showing up and See. volunteering not only for church services, not only for Bible study, but those uh, events that they have outside Mm -hmm. of the regular services. A lot of women are giving their time to things within the church just to further the body of Christ. So, you know, it's time for more men to step up because there's there's some out there, not as many as the women, but Mm -hmm. it's time for more men to step up and get it right. 
And you know, it's funny that you say that because every time that we have gone out of town, you know, to minister at another ministry, it's the women that are, that are making food. It's the women that are getting baskets together. It's the women that are, you know, ministering to the needs of the guest speakers and stuff. I see yeah. the women, you know, sometimes you do have men there, but it's primarily the women that mm-hmm. are ministering, at, you know, whether it's church anniversary, church picnic, whatever else is going on. You see the women taking care of those needs. It's like, okay, well, where are the men? Mm-hmm. Where are the men? All y'all can't listen. We know a lot of y'all provide for y'all families. We believe that that is an honorable thing and we're not here to take away from that. But please don't leave your wife serving all the time at the church and you at home with the remote watching Sunday football. You yeah. should be, if you want to cover and protect your wife and your family, you need to be serving right alongside her. Put that remote down and show up with your service. We need more men present then when the men don't show up then we get attitude we want to accuse the pastor well he always got all these women serving the church because the men don't want to volunteer they don't (laughs) are we gonna stop the ministry because the men don't want to volunteer we're gonna work with who god sent then you're looking at the pastor crazy how about you go to the church and you volunteer you pick Mm -hmm. up a vacuum you might not know how to cook but hey you can carry stuff unfolding tables put that crock pot in there something we need mm-hmm. more men volunteering so then we can stop looking at, at the men of God crazy. Yeah, we got some crazy ones out there, but we need more men volunteering that you wouldn't have to look at the pastor side eye because, and well, how about you go volunteer? Mm-hmm. Every ministry exactly. I've been a part of, you have a disproportionate amount of women volunteering to serve volunteering to cook i know every man can't cook and if you can't boil water god bless you just don't touch the stove amen that's not your ministry you can touch the pot of water for the baptismal pool and that's it god bless you but we don't we don't have a lot of men volunteering in the body so Mm -hmm. even the men that are present the men typically want to preach pray and prophesy but they don't actually want to serve in administration and the helps in the body gifts we need men more places than the pulpit in the church i don't know who this is for we all the men can't be in the pulpit now. Mm-mm. We we need men helping to clean. We need men greeting. We need men on the personal prayer and personal ministry team. We we don't just need men in the sound booth. We need men preaching and prophesying. We we need men helping some of the younger men with their clothes or their groceries or what have you. We need more men that are present in the body of Christ. Yeah. And when the men are not present. God has to use who's available. So he uses mm-hmm. the women to step up. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Now that we ha- had that conversation, I just remembered an event I went to. Um, I think it was earlier this year. It was a women's event. And it was here um, locally in Orlando, Florida. Mm-hmm. Um, can't think of the name of the church right now, but it's um, two of um, a husband and wife. Uh, mm-hmm. Apostle Dina Elmore and Apostle Larry Elmore. Mm-hmm. And it was just surprising to me because like, again, we, we don't see a lot of men uh, serving, a lot of men, uh, you know, showing up, not for us, but for the kingdom of God. Yeah. And uh, it was a women's event and it was, you know, the, her husband and he had a, a other few gentlemen there, they were serving. Mm. everyone and I was like oh my goodness she said oh yeah we don't play that here she said when we have things for the women she said my husband and his um people get together and they serve us they do everything they set up they do all of that they do the food everything and I was just like floor like oh my goodness like Mm. (laughs) never experienced that before but them as a couple they're amazing so it's like when you get to know them it's like okay it makes sense yeah. Um, but there's again, it's not a lot of that going on. Um, and I forgot my other point I was gonna make, so we'll come back to that um okay. if I could remember it. But there was no questions in the chat. So we'll go ahead and get to our last piece here. Okay. And this is if I could yep, get it up here. Um I, I love to share, always to share encouragement, motivation, inspiration, and empowerment. Uh, mm-hmm. So what kind of encouragement, motivation, inspiration, empowerment would you share with us women that uh, want to be a kingdom woman if we're already not, or just something that's the, the, for, ones, the, for the ones that are, 
uh, just what would you share for us as well? So the ones for the ones that are not and want to be, and for the ones that are, just to give us something to keep on uh, being that and continually growing in that. Okay, definitely. The first thing that I would share is concerning your dedication. Um, scripture reference Luke eight and twenty one when it talks about you know my family are those who do the will of the Father. In my book, The Family Test, I wrote a chapter concerning suffering mothers and grandmothers because we find that many times when women get overly involved in the affairs of their adult children or their grandchildren. The enemy uses that as a trap to call stagnation to the assignment and purpose that God has put on your life. So it definitely will require your dedication and you being laser focused on what God has for you to do. Love your children, pray for them, pray for your grandchildren, but do not become so overly involved in their affairs that it becomes a snare of the enemy to take you off track for the course that God has you on. As a kingdom woman, you must come with the ideology that the kingdom is put first. When the kingdom is first, everything else has to be prioritized in the means and in the realm and understanding that the kingdom comes first. And so in that dedication, a subsection of that, I would say, is the prioritize, the prioritization of your personal life. As you place the kingdom first, you will find yourself going through tests and challenges where you have to continually choose to put the kingdom first. This may hurt some feelings. This may change certain things around you. Family may not understand. You love them and pray for them, but bless the Lord, that is not of your concern because your concern with this focus and dedication and prioritizing is to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant at the end of your life. Yes. If you please your children and your grandchildren, but you don't hear a well done, daughter of God, you failed. You've got to prioritize the kingdom first. And if they love you the way that they say they do, they'll understand. They might not get it all, but they'll at least respect your dedication. After that is going to take integrity. You know, going back to this example we gave earlier about these purses and these bags and these brooches, you've got to come with something authentic. All right. You cannot, if your goal as a kingdom woman, or if you're aspiring to be a kingdom woman, say, oh, I got to get this. And again, there's nothing wrong with fashion. All right. I love fashion. My husband has blessed me with all types of name brand clothes and shoes. But those things of themselves are not what should, you should aspire to have to grow as a kingdom woman. You have to have integrity and you have to have competency. Saying that you're a kingdom woman is one thing, but actually being able to teach and demonstrate among the kingdom is important. So along with your integrity, you must have the competency. So I want to encourage you to study, to show yourself approved, continue to be a lifelong learner and continue. If you have not already find somewhere to posture yourself as a spiritual daughter, as a disciple, not a mentee, as a spiritual daughter and a disciple, because at a mentee, you're going to get some information and then that's it. You need somebody to pour into you the way Jesus poured into his disciples. Yes to grow and measure in stature, to rise as a kingdom woman and do not skip your process. It's all right. You might have to go back around the mountain a few times, but stay in a spot to where you get your process. So then when you are ordained or affirmed and released and sent out with your orders for in the kingdom of God, you know that you've done it right and you don't get to a place where you're sent out and then you get your butt toe up and you got to come back because you skip some stuff along the way. You want to get out there and make the kingdom of God proud. You don't want to get out there and be an embarrassment to God or yourself or whoever commissioned you because you fought your process and you did not go through your process the right way. I want to encourage you to consecrate yourself that you can flow in demonstration of the kingdom. You have to flow in signs, wonders, and miracles. First of all, these are signs of a believer that we shall heal the sick, that we shall raise the dead, that if, if any poison touch us, we shall, I'm not telling you tempt God, but this is what the Bible says. Any poison, we drink any poison, we shall not die. These things should be normal. If you scared of, of casting out devils, then you need, you need some more training and preparation before you're ready to go forward as a kingdom woman. Jesus Christ said, if I cast out devils by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God is upon you. Mm -hmm. I question people who flow in healing, but they, they don't do deliverance. 
And I've seen some big names. Oh, I don't do deliverance. Devils are beneath me. No, the Bible says Satan can't, is, can't be a king divided. And say, kingdom divided, Satan can't cast himself out. If you're going to be a kingdom woman, baby, you're going to have to get down and do some deliverance, which means mm -hmm. that, well, again, going back to these clothes and this attire, you're going to have to wear something that allows you to kneel down at some point to be able to administer some, some deliverance. Yes. You can't be scared of demons. You can't be scared of sicknesses. No, a kingdom woman ain't no sick and shut in list. I'm going to bring you out of shut in and break the captivity off you. You've got to have a boldness and a faith that brings healing and deliverance to people the way you are literally snatching them out of bondage as a kingdom woman. And you have to choose which kingdom that you're going to represent. Mm -hmm. Going back to the integrity piece, you can't be a kingdom woman one day and a woman of some other kind another day. Even as you're going through your process, you've got to choose to be a kingdom woman. Like you said, a kingdom woman, there's a certain mindset. You have to choose to be royal and regal even when it's not popular. You can't just go do some of these trends that are out here. There's a lot of interesting things on the internet. Some of it is a hot mess. But as a kingdom woman, you have to choose to represent the kingdom first. No, you can't do some of these challenges because it, it, it brings question to your integrity as a kingdom woman it brings a provocativeness and and we love to get out here and do certain stuff and say well i'm still saved if you've got to do if, if you are to a place where you now have to defend your salvation afterwards you probably shouldn't be doing it anyway Come on. the next thing you have to do oh my god dr tamra they're they gonna get back <laughs> <laughs> you have to choose, watch this, here it go, you ready? Come on now. You have to choose a marriage that benefits God's kingdom first and then your happiness. Yes, come on, yes. You got to choose a marriage <laughs> that benefits God's kingdom first. I made a slew of posts about this uh, the other day. You know, you got all these women, oh, I want me a gangster and oh, I want this and that. That's not gonna benefit God's kingdom first. <laughs> no. You casting out devils and he walk around casting out a nine. No, that's not going to benefit God's kingdom. You've got to position yourself for a marriage that benefits God's kingdom first. Your happiness yes. is secondary. Mm -hmm. Oops. Let me say that again. Your happiness <laughs> is secondary. It doesn't mean that God doesn't love you. It doesn't mean that God doesn't see, want to see you happy. Watch this. Let's go back to the, in the garden, right? Adam was tending to the garden. He was naming the animals. And God said, it's not good for man to be alone. Let me make him a help me. It wasn't because Adam wanted to be happy. Adam was fine. He didn't know he was alone. God said it wasn't good for him to be alone. He was naming the animals and tending the garden and over here and picking fruit and doing this. Doo -doo 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 -doo. He was minding his business. God said it wasn't good for him to be alone. So he gave him somebody to help him to fulfill his kingdom assignment to tend that garden and keep it because there was a lot going on. And if you keep reading, you see the serpent, you see why he needed help because mm -hmm. he couldn't see everything. Still didn't work, but at least in the timing that it did, he needed help. So when your marriage is kingdom centered, you have to choose a marriage that benefits the kingdom. And there's a position where he has something for you to help meet that need. One right. thing that I consciously tell my daughters in the faith, if he's not doing anything, you can't help him. He has mm -hmm. nothing for you to help him with. He can do nothing all by himself. Even if he's not in ministry yet, do he have a vision he wants to build? Does he have something that he's working on? Is there any part of it written down? Do he at least have the first step written down? Do, do we do we got a vision board somewhere that we can build from? If you don't have nothing, you don't have the ministry, you don't have the business, you don't have the vision board, you don't have like five little points. You have to have something for me to work with. Otherwise, yeah. you don't need me. You don't need uh -huh. my assistance. And we, well, he's nice. He's this. He loved God. He go to church. But what does he have that you can help him with that's going to benefit the kingdom of God? That's the first question you've got to ask. And if you don't have the answer to that, the rest of the qualifications are null and void because he'll be wasting your time and it defeats the purpose of a kingdom marriage because there has to be a need for you to help meet. 
The next thing that I would say is position yourself again to finance kingdom purpose. There are many, many women that God is raising up in this season to begin to finance God's kingdom purposes. And there are many of you that are watching now. You think, well, I got a little bit. Continue what you're doing and watch how God multiplies you. And the next project, you'll be able to say, how much is it? And just write the check for the whole thing. Ain't no building fund. I, the check be here in three days. I just called my bank. I called the concierge. Check be here in three days. FedEx coming. And then you'll have all the money right there. It's a certified check. So that is, it's, it's legit. That's how God is positioning some of you women to finance his kingdom in this season. If that's you, yeah. listen, lift your hands, pray, and just receive that over your life in Jesus' mm. name. So mm. that's the encouragement I will give Dr. Mm. Tamara to those who are kingdom women, who are desiring to be kingdom women, or feel like, hey, I, want, I, I thought I was a kingdom woman, but I'm still learning along the way. Listen, I want to encourage you, keep going on the path that you're on. Keep proclaiming for God's kingdom and continue your process. And if you are not posture somewhere for mm. somebody to raise you up as a daughter in the faith or as a disciple, as a kingdom woman, get somewhere and get posture and let them pour into you the way Jesus poured in his disciples. And in two or three years, you won't even recognize yourself. Come on. Come on. Oh my goodness. If you guys are just coming on, you have to go back and watch this from the beginning. Okay, if you don't, you are doing yourself a disservice. You are, have missed out on so many good nuggets that have been yeah. shared. And I'm just so thankful for uh, Dr. Apostle Jasmine Blair. I am so thankful for you. I thank you um, every time that I reach out and ask you to come on and you know, you're know you able to give me that. Yes, not, I'm sorry, not give me. But give God Amen. that yes. Let me clear that up. <laughs> give God that yes. I, I'm I'm speechless right now. Just you just mm -hmm. shared so much, mm -hmm. so much. Um, and I, I want to say thank you to some people that's on uh, because when you were um sharing your book and I'm writing it down, I was gonna tell you. I said tell everybody uh, where we could get it from. And Destiny was on it. She already Amen. put the link in the chat. So Destiny, oh my goodness. Thank you for always coming on and just uh, sharing the points and sharing more information for everybody. Um, I want to thank um, Apostle Lionel Blair for coming on and supporting us, but not only us, but his wife, his amazing wife. Thank you, Apostle Lionel. Um, everybody from ICAM that's on. Um, Lisa and I think I saw Edwin come on. Yes. And um, oh goodness, Candace, Amen. uh, Veronica. Amen. I just thank you all. Latoya, um, she's on as well. Latoya Olivia Gwen. I hopefully I said your last name right. Uh, my sister Latoya, thank you so much for coming on. And my sister, um, prophetess Regina Gamble Scott. That's my girl. Thank you for coming Amen. on. Bless you. Um, Yes, Vania, my, uh, she's on as well. Amen. I just want to thank you all. And I hope you guys will share it with someone else because this is not only for us. It is for every woman and not only every woman, every man, because if he's married, if he has sisters, we want to get this information out there. Okay, if you are striving to be a kingdom woman, yes, we can be a Christian woman, but you have to grow. You have to go beyond that. So we yeah. want to get you to be kingdom women that is serving the kingdom of God. Okay. So I wanted to share that. Um, and I want to say this also becoming a kingdom woman. It's a lifestyle. It's not something yes. that like ja Apostle Jasmine said, it's not something you could just pick up one day and sit it down the next. This is a lifestyle. This is a daily walk every single day uh you have to represent the kingdom of god so you don't want to be yeah we'll get off some days but you don't want to stay there you want to get back on track um and i want to point this out as well um it's paraphrasing something that you shared earlier influence and platforms do not make you a kingdom woman yes okay just because you got the latest shoes the latest bags and uh, the latest clothes that's out, that does not make you a kingdom woman, okay? Mm -hmm. So just want to just highlight that. Um, 
one thing I want to end with, um, because I know you and Apostle Lionel have uh, done um, a um, YouTube on this. And, um, you know, I've always hear it thrown out there and everyone just thinks that just because they're a woman, they're a Proverbs 31 woman. <laughs> <laughs> and we know all the things that the Pro Proverbs 30 woman has did. And it's like, yes, yeah, so y'all ain't even close to it. Just, I want to mm. just end with that. Let's give us a little snippet of what you and Apostle Lionel shared on your, uh, your broadcast uh, for that particular subject matter. Absolutely. And for those of you that don't know, you can find us on YouTube at the F3 podcast, where we talk about faith, family, and finance, and tying those three together in your daily life. And we did an episode on the Proverbs 31. It's actually funny because we kind of we kind of tag team preached it a little bit, <laughs> but we literally went verse by verse through Proverbs chapter 31 and broke it down and explained it and gave some commentary. But what we find is what a lot of people say at Proverbs 31 is they're not living up to that. And if we read that, we find that her husband was somebody of prominence. He was an elder respected at the gates. She was a businesswoman. It says she considered fields and bought, and bought it. There were certain linens and things. She prepared things and the people at the gates, they were buying some of her products as well. She got up early in the morning but while it was still dark, she stayed up late at night. And when winter came, she did not fear. So that tells me that there was some logistics in place. And like, like, I, like I always say, I'm not a wife. I'm an in-home logistics management specialist. There's a lot that goes along with making sure you got this, that, and the third, and making sure everybody's got everything in need. So there was management skills. There was home economic skills. There were entrepreneur skills. And there was favor and finances all flowing through her hands. So the Proverbs 31 woman biblically was somebody that had at least a stream, if not streams, of income flowing so a lot of this and again everybody's able to set things up how they want to if you want to have a traditional where you know you have the husband work and the wife stays at home listen that's a blessing that's beautiful for you and your family that works for you and we bless god for that but if we're going to be biblically accurate the proverbs 31 was not someone who simply stayed at home and took clean say cooked clean and cared for her children she had other dealings and it says she was along with the merchant so she was out there where they was trading stuff and selling stuff she had had entrepreneurial dealings as well. And she brought stream of finance into her home as well. Even though he was somebody of prominence, even though he was respected at the gates, he was an elder with the city at the gates, which tells you that he had a high ranking possession position, but it did not stop her from making and selling possessions for income. So this Technically, we want to update this today. This is a power couple. They both bringing in money. They both doing big things. They both making big moves. This is who the Proverbs 31 woman was. And if we really want to be a Proverbs 31, we got to restudy this chapter and think about, because again, does she not fit these women that fit this kingdom woman? These women opening up their homes, ministering to Jesus with their substance. They didn't work no job, but they had substance. They didn't necessarily have all the education. They couldn't go to the school. They couldn't study under the rabbi the way the men did, but they had substance. Yes. Yes. Kingdom woman. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 31. There's a parallel. Come on. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Okay. And Destiny did put the link in the chat. So if you have not seen that podcast episode on YouTube and on the other platforms, um, from the Apostles, Lionel and Jacqueline Blair, please go ahead and watch that. You will uh, gain so much wisdom and understanding um, from that. Um, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to close out. I do want to share this, and I'm probably going to have to bring you back on Absolutely. because I think this is another conversation of, of something that I'm about to share um, and that I posted earlier this morning. And this is what I posted. I said, so many of us are rushing or have rushed to become a wife before we've even mastered becoming or being a daughter. And Ooh. that right there, okay, mm. when it when the Holy Spirit gave me that, I almost fell out. I was like, Lord, mm. 
we like we have so much work to do and it's like our focus is is not in the right places we're so rushed to be a wife yes and he was like so many of you and I'm placing myself in that category as well so many of us have not even mastered how to be a daughter my god my god that 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 is heavy there I'm, I'm gonna yeah. just put a holy hush I'm gonna exercise my right to be quiet in the name <laughs> of the Lord because as you said that's a whole nother conversation of yes, Islam ma'am. and we definitely yes. don't want to take away from the meat of what that's going to be so yes, that's that's ma'am. going to be exciting oh yes okay so y'all got a little preview you got that to think on I'm definitely gonna we're definitely gonna have that conversation and see if we can you know come together and uh, do this um, yes. because uh, yeah that's a whole nother conversation but again uh, Dr. <laughs> Apostle Jasmine Blair I so appreciate you Man, so Apostle well. Lionel thank you so much you know I, I just love you both I really do Man, we love you, you as guys well. thank you you guys are a kingdom couple and I'm just I'm excited for everything that God is doing in your life I want you to go ahead and share that you guys will go be going back uh, to the in-person service and just let everybody know where they can find you guys so they can make that drive and get on over there, get some healing and deliverance on. So. <laughs> amen, amen. If you are in the Hampton Roads area in Virginia, we are returning back to our in-person service with our kingdom resurgence. We're going to put a research in this environment for healings and miracles and the supernatural. We're going to be at the Hampton Inn and Suites in Newport News, Virginia and Oyster Point. It is across the street for the Patrick Henry Mall, so you definitely cannot miss it. We are going to be there September, Friday, September the 16th at 7 p.m. until God decides that he is finished. So you definitely do not want to miss that. Listen, if you are sick, if you are on any kind of prescription medication, you have any kind of ailment, any type of arthritis, if you need direction in your life for this season, you do not want to miss being in that atmosphere. We will be there and we will have our team there able to minister to you and pray with you. So definitely we look forward to seeing you there and putting a surge of God's kingdom power and authority back in this region on September the 16th at 7 p.m. Awesome. And for those of you that need the information, thank you, Destiny. She has put the link in the chat. You can click there and you can actually find the address and all of that information as well. And there's an email address if you have more questions. Maybe you're not from here. You want to know about accommodations, definitely reach out and we can get you some information. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and just... um, I'm going to say to be continued because yes, we're definitely going to come back and uh, share some more. Um, but again, I just want to thank everyone for coming on and joining us. Again, if you're just coming on, please go back and please. watch the replay. Yes. It's going to be there for you. Take some notes, get healed, get delivered, get set free. And uh, just look out to join us next time when we come back with another conversation. Uh, We have some other things in the works that's coming up. So just stay tuned for that. Um, Just want to go ahead and just thank you again, Dr. Apostle Jasmine Blair. And um, we'll be back next time. Thank you all for joining. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you as well.